Hello everyone, today in our series of Doctrix interviews, we have with us very eminent cardiothoracic surgeon, Dr. T. Sundar, who is the senior cardiothoracic surgeon and heart and lung transplant surgeon at Apollo Hospitals, Chennai, India. Thank you so much, sir, for coming with us today. How effective is a double lung transplant and reversal of right heart failures, and at what stage should the surgery be done to have maximum benefit for the patient? So, as we all know, a transplant is only considered when that organ is not working. It has failed completely and it has reached an end stage point in its natural history. So the lungs are supplied by the right heart. So when the lungs fail, the blood pressure in the lungs go up and the right heart fails. So when we take the bad lungs out and put lung, the good ones in, we expect the right ventricular function to improve over a period of time and thus help the patient. However, I hasten to add, the scenario in India is a little different when compared to the West, where patients are referred for transplant much earlier on in the course of the disease. What we find, the great majority of the patients that we find, are patients who start off having a lung disease, an end-stage lung failure, but the disease progresses to that stage that the right ventricle virtually gives up completely. So they have a combined heart and lung failure, and such patients, when we transplant the lung alone, do not come off the heart-lung machine. So we are rather forced to consider a heart-lung transplant in these patients. And that explains precisely why we have the highest number of heart and double lung transplants in the country. If one were to look at the scenario worldwide, heart and double lung transplant is on the decline. There are not many patients who really need heart and double lung except a few conditions. But the scenario in India is such that the awareness of lung transplant is just catching up and invariably patients get referred far too late that we have to do a heart and double lung. So the LVAD left ventricular assist device is used as either bridge to transplant therapy or destination therapy. Who are considered the ideal candidates for each of these and how long can the LVAD be used? Well, as the name implies, left ventricular assist device, it's a device to assist the left ventricle, the lower left-sided chamber of the heart. Um, there are some scenarios where we expect the heart to recover. A typical example is an unfortunate patient who catches a common cold and that affects the heart causing myocarditis inflammation of the heart and the heart acutely fails. So if we had some system where we can support the heart function till the heart recovers, that will be ideal. So in cases of myocarditis, when you implant a device, given time the heart recovers, then we go explant the device. The other condition is uh, young women after, after the delivery of the children, they can get what is called a postpartum cardiomyopathy. Mm -hmm. So in those conditions as well, we can support with the device and once the heart recovers, remove the device. So we call this as bridge to recovery. There are some patients who are acutely ill and we fear they may not survive until an organ is available. Now such patients, if as a result of the failing heart, there are effects pressure effects on the liver and the kidney resulting in a worsening kidney function, declining liver function, we implant the LVAD so that we can support the all other organs in the body and when the right time comes, we transplant. So we call this a bridge to transplant. The last scenario is a bridge as a, a LVAD as a destination therapy. Now there are patients whom the heart would be failing it would be an end-stage heart failure, but who cannot be transplanted for medical reasons. The one contraindication to transplant is the presence of an active malignancy. So if a person has an active cancer, he should not get a transplant because the immunosuppression that you give after the transplant would worsen his cancer. That defeats the very purpose of the operation.
And if he's had a cancer within the last five years treated, he still is not a candidate. So such patients where we can't do a transplant but has a failing heart, we can do a device with the understanding that the device is going to be with him till the end of his life, i.e. destination therapy. Dr. Sundar, can you elaborate some of the challenges that you face in terms of transplantation in India? India has been unique in that there have been, uh, it's a diverse country. You've got varying populations, some Dr. Girinath alluded to it as to the religious beliefs, which are now fast changing. Still, we do come across patients who are inherently a little reluctant to have any surgical procedure done and they would rather choose a non-surgical approach. The end result being they come up rather late to us for presentation. So one of the challenges that we find are late presentations of uh, the disease. The patient with heart failure, if you were to come to us earlier, the stay after the transplant would be much lesser. They come after the other organs also have failed, thereby requiring a heart and a double lung operation instead of just a heart or a lung transplant alone. And the second, what we find is, India is a TB endemic country, which means there is a lot of prevalence of TB. Although the person may not necessarily have TB, once we give the immunosuppression, it can flare up. Now, the effect of TB endemicity has to be looked at from two points of view. One is the recipient, the patient receiving the transplant, but also the donor. What happens classically in a scenario is the poor victim of a road traffic accident when he's been declared brain dead. At that time, the grieving family agrees to the supreme human sacrifice, which is donating the organs of the loved ones. And we don't have much time in our hands to completely evaluate him. So what we do is we go by an x-ray, we do a bronchoscopy, we run a few tests. Now these tests are not exact or they're not so comprehensive that you can either rule in or rule out a TB. If the x-ray grossly looks all right, if his PO2 is fine, if his bronchoscopy is fine, we go ahead and do. The concerns are he might have been having some subclinical tuberculosis. So yes, prob problems inherent to India is TB, late referral, and the, the general belief of the society. But these are being addressed, and over the last few years, we see that things are only getting better. According to the WHO, only about 0.01% in India donate their organs after death, while in Western countries it's around 70 to 80 percent. You have previously mentioned about the current scenario and the challenges we face in donor organ availability. But can you further elaborate on how can we help improve this scenario? Well, I think um, by giving the example of Tamil Nadu, you know, we can have pointers which would clearly improve the scenario, i.e. improve donation rates. Uh, what happened in Tamil Nadu was there was uh, an unfortunate event. A doctor couple sadly lost their son, their only son to a road traffic accident. And they came forward after he was declared brain dead and allowed complete uh, multi-organ donation of a son. The person was called Hitendran, and we call this as the Hitendran effect, which took place in 2008. There was a large media coverage of this, and following that, that exponentially increased the public awareness of organ donation. And from then on, the organ donation has been on the rise. And uh, in India, the foremost state is Tamil Nadu. And thanks to the supreme infrastructure that our hospital enjoys, we are able to deliver what we have been doing so far. And we must mention about the government playing an act. Uh, that is a central government agency which maintains a common wait list, which is strictly on a first come first serve basis. And of course, we have the Tamil Nadu traffic police, which organizes a green corridor to ensure quick transport of the organs. So even after post-transplant, it is very difficult to manage high blood pressure caused by immunosuppressant. So how can a doctor manage that? And are there any special precautions that need to be taken? Following transplants, a lot of precautions have got to be adhered to. That again has to be tailored to individual 
scenarios. Patients normally have a bit of an altered renal function, they need salt restriction, they will need tablets, especially heart failure causes secondary hyperaldosteronism. So one of the most important drugs that we use is an ACE inhibitor or an angiotensin receptor blocker keeping in mind that can affect the renal function too and of course a lot of our immunosuppressive drugs also affects the renal function so it will be a multi-modality approach to this and there are times when the renal function is too bad and you can't give ACE inhibitors we talk in terms of the calcium channel blockers so, so do you think an online digital platform of doctors like Doplexus can help doctors share knowledge about uh, cardiothoracic surgery I believe so entirely believe so Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your time. Thank you. To stay updated on our latest scale videos and interviews, please follow us on Twitter, like us on our Facebook page, and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Happy Doc Flexing!